Okay, so we got a shower failure in here. Uh, the shower curb is failing. So let's go check it out. Let's see what's going on. We're actually here in my hometown and I came up to the house and met the homeowner because uh, he reached out to me by email and found out I actually played football with him in college, which is really cool. We were on the same football team. I recognized him and I was like, where do I know you from? We're gonna go see what Eric has to say about his shower failure. So this is the master shower. So this, we bought the house in 2007. We were, bought it when it was new. And we came in, moved in, and this shower, obviously daily use. Since then, uh, 2014, or actually before that, I think probably like 2012, we started to notice the baseboards discoloring and swelling. Um, and it was still under warranty at that point, so we called the manufacturer and submitted a claim and they came out and uh, with this shower, they uh, only took out a few of the tiles and they like spot fixed the hot mop. And they said, the the guy in charge said that that was going to be, should be good. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, okay, as long as it holds up. And it was funny because when the guy said that, and then the guy who was actually doing the work was like, no, this is, you know, <laughs> he was like, I, he's like, you know, we need, we need more than that. And so, and I was, I was. So the boss said it was going to work. And, and then the, the guy actually doing the work was like, I don't know. I don't think this is going to help. And yeah. so sure enough, here we are. And that was in 2014. And here we are, you know, yeah. eight years later. Right. Uh, the one in the other bathroom has the actual curb is, is swelling because you can tell, you can see all of the grout is, is cracking. Uh, yeah. We have, you know, like mineral deposits at the base. So obviously we have a leak in there. Right. So what we'll do is we'll jump into it and we'll try to save as much as we can okay. in case, you know, we can do a repair on it and yeah. save you, you know, thousands of dollars. I, I know I gave you an initial quote of in the range to, to redo the whole shower would be yeah. like 13 to 17,000. So if we can save some costs, we, we're definitely going to try to do that for you. Sure. So yeah, we'll take that one apart and then when we get in here, I think if we just take the baseboard off okay. and some of the drywall, yeah, we can see what's going on under there and, and hopefully save you some money on this because I know these are huge expenses. We'll take a look at it and we'll let you know how it goes. Sounds good. All right, man. Thanks for coming. Yep. Yeah. All right. Now the fun begins. We're going to start getting into this. Yeah, actually, I don't know if you want to see, but I have a couple pictures I snapped back in 2014 of oh, really? what they did. Oh, yeah. That'd be so great. It's just... Like I said, with the tiles gone and the hot mop they put in. That's, this was when they were water testing it. Now they mm -hmm. get in there. Yeah, it's crazy because that's a lot of work that goes into doing what they did. And yeah. to not fix it correctly. Again, they probably didn't unclog the weep holes is probably what happened. Yeah. So that's the first thing we're going to check. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna start here. This is the, the boys' bathroom, and obviously you can see we got a lot of cracking on the curb here. So I'm gonna start by just pulling these tiles off and see what's right underneath the curb. Nice mortar bed, they did a good job floating it. But you can see here, we have some of the thin set coming loose. Uh, we got grout cracking right here, so maybe we'll see something when we take these tiles off. So we got a we got a big crack in the in the mortar in the in the curb. So yeah, so what's happening is these two by fours are getting water to them. And so it's expanding and causing that big crack along the mortar and that's transferring up through the tile. So yeah, now I'm starting to see a few, few bugs in here and a lot of water. Check out, check out how, um, wet this is there's actual water 
seeking, you can see, you see that's actually wet. It's got wet and it looks like some, some mold growing on it. See the black stuff. This stuff is tar, but the other stuff looks like, looks like mold. It's only like, you can't even break it out without it crumbling, but let's see if I can get a piece. So that's the thickness of, of the mortar bed. Now the mortar bed should be a minimum a wall float of three eighths at the minimum. And that's more like an eighth inch. Not sure why they kept that so thin, but one of the reasons why the tiles um, popped off there, but you can see, you can see the crack goes all the way through the mortar, all the way down. Now that I got the tiles off of the curb, I can obviously see that the mortar is wet. And what happens with these hot mop wheat style drains and pan systems, the traditional with either a pan liner or a hot mop, if you've seen a lot of my other videos, I show that you know if the wheat poles get clogged, that mortar gets saturated and there's nowhere for the water to go except it wicks up and over the curb. And then actually a lot of the problems start from the outside of the curb, not the inside, because the mortar's wet and saturated. And you saw down here how wet it was. It was actual visible drips of water. It gets under the curb from this side and then starts to swell those two by fours and then it all starts to fail. A dry pack, if that gets wet over time, it will wick up and over the curb. And I remember when Star Tile first told me that, because this is the way we've built these showers in this area for you know, 50 years. This is the way it's always been done. It was the way I was taught. And when he first said that, I was like, no, nah, dude, you're tripping. But now that I see it happening over and over and over again, he is right on that. So we'll give that one to start tile. Now that I have that figured out, what I'm going to do is open up around the shower drain and see if I can get to those weep holes and see if they're clogged. Okay, so we're going to jump into this. I'm going to cut out a little section uh, with the grinder and get down to those weep holes and see if they're clogged. These are true work, work pants. They're my favorite work pants. If you want to get a pair, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can get 15% off. Just click on that link and you'll be good to go. But I love them. They're, they're stretchy. They're comfortable. They're a little more tight fitting. They're not like Carhartts that are real loose and baggy. They're, like I said, they're breathable. If they get wet, they dry out really fast. So I'm super stoked on these work pants. So again, if you want some, I'll put the link in the description. But let's jump into this. On yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah. You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah. Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah. And once you finally get a taste of the race, you'll never look back once you felt that. Don't let somebody take your time and your work, just focus on yourself. Just as I had suspected, we got a saturated mortar bed, a lot of, a lot of water in this mortar bed. You can see it's, it's just completely, completely saturated, fully wet. And they did, even though they had gravel around these weep holes, they weren't working very well. And I can't even see them on the inside of the drain, but I think there was one right here. So what happens is the mineral salts that that come out of mortar, you know, the white stuff, we call it efflorescence. There's actually some right here on this crack. You can see that's efflorescence coming through the crack. Wherever there's cracks in mortar um, or water that's evaporating through mortar, it leaves these mineral salt deposits called efflorescence. And that usually is what clogs up the weep holes. It's, it's white stuff. So let me see. Yeah, here's a weep hole. Yeah, it's completely clogged. I can't, can't get that through there. Let me see if I can. Did 
There we go. So that weep hole was clogged, and now you can see from the inside here. It's really hard to get inside the drain footage. So yeah, you can see the the uh, screw in here coming through, and it, it broke through. Let me see if I can grab it and show you. Let me see if I can grab that. So this is what was clogging the weep hole. It's hard to tell, but as I screwed that in there, it came out. And yeah, it's just mineral salts and gunk and a little bit of tar that was clogging that weep hole. And there's, so there's three of those at this drain. And once they become clogged, it gets everything wet. And then you can see what happens is it, as the mortar pan gets wet, it soaks up on the curb. And once the curb embedded in here, see how the curb, the mortar, is embedded in this dry pack, then it just wicks up and over, it saturates everything, and then it's going to the outside of the curb and actually causing the damage from the outside of the shower, not even on the inside, because this is all waterproof, so nothing's getting below here, but the water goes up and over and damages the two by fours under here. You know, you don't see Sal doing traditional shower pans anymore. One thing we have in common is we're all using the sealed system. The one thing that I hope Star Tile hops on board with, and maybe we can make a concession. Maybe I can say, Star Tile, you were right about this. And maybe you can make a concession and say, I'm gonna switch to a bonding flange drain like the Flow FX or the Curdy bonding flange drain and do it per the manufacturer's specs for a sealed system. So hopefully, Star Tile, we see one of those bonding flanges in a video coming up soon. And um, we'll continue to educate people on the wicking that happens as these weep holes get clogged. The moisture goes up and over, gets to the wood two by fours and swells them up. Uh, this could also have been alleviated by using a, a masonry curb, a fully, you know, a brick curb, concrete curb that didn't have the two by fours in there. That's another thing that I try to stay away from, especially on a slab foundation, is no wood curbs. I'm going to take a little bit of this curb out here so we can see what's happening with the two by fours. I'm going to cut into some of this tar paper and see what the two by fours look like underneath it. And yeah, the, the two by fours are definitely, definitely wet. I don't know if you can see, but there's actually, can you see that, Zach? There's actually water. So what happens is, is as this dimensional lumber takes in water, it expands and it starts to drink it up, you know, wood, you know, really you'll soak in the water, especially dimensional lumber. So that bottom two by four getting wet is just causing everything to swell up. Uh, what probably needs to be happening when if they're going to build these systems like that, they need to separate, you know, the deck mud from the curb, you know, leave a little gap in there. So if that pan becomes saturated, there's a gap and you know, you could fill it in with some sealant. And I even believe that TCNA, TCNA B441, then that's the method that's used here. I believe they show a detail where the wall mud is held up above the deck mud. And then, yeah, you put some sealant in there and that's like a, a a water break right because if it's down in that mud that water comes up and over but if it was up above with sealant in between that would be a way to stop this from happening all right Eric so I got good news and I got bad news okay so okay. we'll start with the good news first of all uh, the master shower here where you're really concerned about the areas next to the curb here yeah um, those areas are fine is just the sheetrock that got wet and okay. the baseboard. So once we pulled the baseboard off and took the sheetrock out, all of the wood is dry. So 
The master shower can stay. It's it's good. Um, you'll just have to keep an eye on those areas just outside of the curb. Okay. And we'll probably leave a gap in between the baseboard and the tile so that it doesn't keep soaking that water that that moisture out that's coming up over the curb. But it's not as bad as what happened in the boys' bathroom. Okay. So that's the bad news. <laughs> the boys' yeah. bathroom is is pretty much done. Okay. Because the the water wicked up over the curb and those that two by four on the bottom is soaked, it caused that expansion and the curb to fail. So at a minimum, the curb and first row of tile and the okay. pan would need to come out. Right. And so to do that, it would run around five grand to do that repair. We would switch it over to a, a bonded waterproofing system, use the Flowfex drain, sheet membrane, do it right so that that wicking doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Um, and then if you wanted to replace the entire shower, you're in that $15,000 range, you okay. know, kind of 13 on the low, 17 on the high. All right. And so what I'll do is I'll write that up and then you guys can talk about it and let me know. And we'll, we'll get it expedited so that you get that bathroom back in order. I'm yeah. sure, sure you need that other bathroom yeah, with the boys. boys. Need <laughs> you need yeah. to take a shower somewhere. So. Yeah. So, okay. So yeah, I appreciate you letting us uh, shoot this video though. My hope is, is that these videos uh, educate whoever's watching them so that when they see these things start to happen, yeah. you know, they know and maybe they communicate to their builder, hey, I, I know what's going on. These weep holes are clogged. We need to get them unclogged so it doesn't keep happening. Yeah. And then also to the installers out there, maybe consider going to a, a bonded waterproofing system like the Schluter Curdy. Flow effects drain, hydro band, those new type systems and newer technology pretty, ma pretty much eliminates these problems that we have with the traditional stuff. So, so my hope is, is that, you know, these videos help and Eric, we really appreciate you letting us film. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming out. All right. Turn this franchise around on a dime, man. It's all about finding your right state of mind. It's all about turning the worst into fine. It's all about time and the work and the climb from the thirst. We will rise. I'm immersed in this life. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth. Just focus on yourself first. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth.